by conditional statements and definitions. Our objective is to write and analyze by conditional statements. Who uses this? A gardener can plan the color of the hydrangeas she plants by checking the pH of the soil. When you combine a conditional statement and its converse, you create what's called a biconditional statement. That is P if and only if Q, which means if P then Q and if Q then P at the same time. Symbolically, you would use two arrows to represent the biconditional statement. You can abbreviate if and only if to IFF. Let's look at a couple of examples. Write the conditional statement and converse within each biconditional. So let's do this first one together. So we need the conditional statement. And we need the converse. All right, so for our conditional, we simply want an if-then statement. So if two angles are congruent, then their measures are equal. For our converse, we're going to switch our hypothesis and conclusion. Keep in mind, you don't want to put your there in the front of the sentence and then later specify what the there was. You should generally specify it first. So changing color here, we have if two angles have equal measures, then they are congruent. Try this next one on your own. After you've paused the video and unpause it, a solution will appear. Okay, so the biconditional stated, a solution is a base if and only if it has a pH greater than 7. The conditional would be if a solution is a base, then it has a pH greater than 7. The converse would be if a solution has a pH greater than 7, then it is a base. Let's try something a little bit different. For each conditional, write the converse and a biconditional statement. So we want the converse and we want the biconditional. Okay, so the converse of the statement that we have here would be to flip your hypothesis and conclusion. So if x equals 3, then 2x plus 5 must equal 11. And the biconditional, you're going to get rid of the if in the front and replace your then with if and only if. So 2x plus 5 equals 11 if and only if x equals 3. 
Try this next one on your own. Pause the video, and when you unpause it, an answer will be revealed. All right, so they gave us, if a point is a midpoint, then it divides the segment into two congruent segments. The converse of that would be, if a point divides the segment into two congruent segments, then the point is a midpoint. The biconditional would be a point is a midpoint if and only if it divides the segment into two congruent segments. Let's analyze the truth value of a biconditional statement. To determine if each biconditional is true, if it's false, give a counterexample. Now, for a biconditional statement to be true, your conditional statement and the converse of that both need to be true. So it's helpful to write out the conditional and the converse. So the conditional of the statement would be if a square has a side length of 5, then it has an area of 25. The converse would be if a square has an area of 25, then it has a side length of 5. All right, so let's look at the truth value of our conditional statement. If a square has a side length of 5, then it has an area of 25. Well, that is true. Okay, so let's look at our converse. If a square has an area of 25, then it has to have a side length of 5. Well, that is true as well. So because both the conditional and the converse are true, your biconditional is true. Okay, so try this next one on your own. Pause the video, and when you return to the video, an answer will be revealed. Okay, so let's look at the conditional and converse of this. If n is a positive integer, then 2n is a natural number. And the converse is if 2n is a natural number, then n is a positive integer. All right, well, your conditional is true. However, your converse is false. Because what would happen if n equals 1 half? So you'd have 2 times a half, which equals 1. And n as a half is not a positive integer. Okay, hopefully you followed that. Now, because of the fact that 1 is true and 1 is false, it doesn't matter which one, if one of them is false, then the whole thing is just going to have to be false. So this biconditional statement is false. Well, in geometry, 
biconditional statements are used to write definitions. A definition is a statement that describes a mathematical object and can be written as a true biconditional. Think of it this way. A good, precise definition can be used forward and backward. So let's look at some definitions. So we're going to practice writing definitions as biconditional statements. All right, so let's do this first one. A triangle is a three-sided polygon. Well, if a figure or a figure is a triangle, if and only if it has three sides. So a figure is a triangle, if and only if it has three sides or it is a three-sided polygon. All right, well, let's look at B. A segment bisector is a ray, segment, or line that divides a segment into two congruent segments. Okay, so you have a ray, segment, or line is a segment bisector if and only if it divides a segment into two congruent segments. So split your sentence into two pieces. Just like when you were writing your conditional statement, if you split it into two pieces, only instead of having an if-then statement, you write it as a biconditional. So you'd have a statement, if and only if, then your conclusion. Well, that concludes our lesson on biconditional statements and definitions. If you have any further questions, ask your teacher.